Hope itself is a star not to be seen in the sunshine of prosperity and only to be discovered in the night of adversity. These are the words by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. President, I have opened my remarks with this statement because I appreciate the difficulties that we are experiencing in the sector at the present moment. Some of these constraints are as a result of weather conditions that have seen some of our regions experiencing prolonged drought that have left many farmers indebted and impoverished. The economic situation which, is, which we are experiencing have seen negative growth in the sector. The animal disease outbreak has not assisted as well. Farm security is another challenge that we are experiencing, both in terms of murder as well as stock theft and other challenges that we have been facing. The list of our challenges is endless, but we must not lose hope. The vision that has been guiding the sector thus far remains relevant even today. I still remember many of you when we were trying to say what should be the vision of agriculture. And that process was very inclusive of all the agricultural stakeholders that we have. We said we wanted a united, prosperous agricultural sector in South Africa that is competitive and inclusive. And I think that vision, even if we may want to revisit again, its fundamental elements are still true today. Because I'm sure all of us will want to make sure that agriculture is a business that can survive even the toughest of times. Our unique history as a country compels us not to abandon the transformation agenda that remains important to this day in order to build a humane society. Equitable access to our natural resources is a matter that needs to be addressed without acrimony. I'm aware that the land issue remains <coughs> a matter around which, in the discourse, sometimes we tend to lose one another. But it is a matter, in my view, that impacts on all of us, even though in different ways. And therefore, it means it's a matter we must address. <coughs> I do hope that the parliamentary process that is reviewing Section 25 of our Constitution will conclude this process sooner in order to create certainty for all of us. President Ramaphosa, in his State of the Nation Address, pronounced that government for itself would release government state land for human settlement and agriculture. The Interministerial Committee led by the Deputy President has been working on the identification and profiling of state land that can be released both for these purposes. The first phase of these processes has actually seen some fruits being born. 100 parcels of land by Public Works and Infrastructure Department has been released for restitution. Tomorrow the Interministerial Committee will be meeting to look further on how much more land can the state release? In order to make a meaningful contribution in the economy, there are few issues, in my view, that will require our attention. Policy certainty, regulatory environment, <coughs> looking at the issues of market opportunities and international trade in particular, institutional capacity and capability are some that, in my view, we will need to address collectively. In, ag in agriculture, we know our problems. And I, can, and I can add a few more there. I think the top three, I shifted the bullets around a little bit in my preparation. I think policy uncertainty, safety, because just how it, it makes people feel that you, you could be the next target uh, of violence, uh, and then climate change and the drought, and the, and the economic effects thereof. Uh, I've been honoured to be a part of the, uh, President Ramaphosa's panel on land reform uh, and you all know what happened 
that we have a main report, uh, and then uh, myself and Nick Sackfontaine um, published a supplementary report or an alternative report. And this is what I've been saying all along, and maybe if, if, if nobody heard it up to so far, I got a question at the Congress of North West the other day, and they said, Dan, should we dismiss the main report and um, reject it and then adopt your report as the official report? And I said, no, that is not what we're going to do. The main report will, will be the main report, and that is how it is. And what we've said that there are more than 20 principles in the main report that we support. And uh, I don't know whether that, is, that has been missed by everyone, but there's been good work. There's good work that was done within the panel. And then you see all the, all the proposals that we made, and that, is, that has been reported in the media um, thoroughly, and I'm not going to go through that again. It's just at the bottom two there, we did feel it necessary to give a uh, more of an economic spin on the supplementary report. Uh, and the food security spin on it, and then the bottom one, and that is actually the one that I want to talk about. I'm going to argue for the protection of property rights and for our constitution to maintain, to be maintained, to, be, to stay as it is. Now, it's a great pity that Advocate and Baker could not uh, finish the process with us, but let us, um, let us remind ourselves of what he says about our constitution. And I've never, um, ever since the panel reports came out, I've, you know, I've, um, I've supported the main report, and I've just, on, like I do on that, uh, on that previous slide, um, but today I'm going to have my say. And, and, and why I could not go with the main report was the following. That the way that the legal opinions of top constitutional lawyers was being dealt with was opportunistic and it, it is as if the panel was helping to come to a, to a political conclusion of some sorts that we need to amend the constitution and that is not something that I could that I could support and let me explain this to you so there you have um, advocate Tembeka saying it's not crucial to amend the constitution and he says that the problem lies elsewhere. He's not the first person to say that. Um, during January, because we uh, lost Advocate Tembeka on the panel, we sourced a legal opinion from Professor Almeida Plessy, and uh, she also said to the panel, the current constitutional framework is not an impediment to effective land reform. And then she elaborates on that. And then afterwards, when um, when the panel report came out, the, problems, the problem that the main report has is to explain legally how they got to the point where they say an amendment to the Constitution is necessary. Because they simply cannot do it. Expropriation of property without compensation is as a default position will be against international law. And then she uh, elaborates there, section 39, uh, 1 binds courts to international law and section 233 binds the state to international treaties signed. And uh, the main panel report were very casual about this. And it even seems at certain areas that they tried to circumvent the Constitution and especially in terms of section 35.8 of the Constitution. It's very easy to misinterpret Section 35 Act of the Constitution and they did that to their detriment.